and welcome everybody to SQLite 3 Database with Tokyo EdTech, that is me. Today I'm going to teach you how to use an SQLite 3 Database. Uh, basically we're going to show you how to create a simple database, um, how to access it, and how to update the information in that uh, database. Okay, so first I'd like to give a big shout out to my channel members. Uh, you can see the snakes on the left, invaders on the right. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, click the join button down below. So let's get started. Um, first, what we're going to look at here is what's called SQLite 3. And SQLite 3 is a module that comes with Python, so you should already have it installed. And it provides a very simple database interface for you to store information on your computer in a file. So I think the first question you have to ask yourself, if you're not familiar with databases, is what really is a database? And so what I've done is I've created a little spreadsheet here to kind of give you an idea. So your database is, is a file. It's basically a big file. And in that file, you have multiple uh, tables. And in those tables, you can store information. So we're going to be making a very simple database today called demo.db. I know, very uh, original. And it's going to have three columns, name, phone, and city. Each of these pieces of data is going to have a type. And they are all three going to be text. And here's the information that I'm going to store into this database, and, or into this table, I should say. And I'm going to name this table contacts, okay, which is, you know, so we're going to make a very simple contact type app. So the first thing we need to do uh, is to actually just create the basic database structure. Now, I'm not an expert on this subject. I did just take a database course. Um, but SQL Lite 3 doesn't do everything that a full-fledged database like MySQL would do. But uh, it does enough, I think, for a, a simple app uh, for a lot of different games or different types of things you might want to do. So you can see here, I'm just going to be following along in the documents. And uh, I'll put a link to that down below. So let's go ahead and start writing some code. And you can see over here, the first thing we need to do is to import SQLite 3. So that will import the module into Python, then we can use it. And then you'll see the next thing it says, C-O-N-N -N equals sqlite3.connect uh, and example.db. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm going to say con equals sqlite3, sqlite3.connect. Basically what we're doing is we're connecting to a database. Now they have single quotes. It could be double quotes. Um, I usually use double quotes. And if I'm going to go ahead and use demo.db. So I'm going to say demo dot db and I'm going to hit save and what this will do is this will create well actually it will look for a file called demo.db in the same folder so here is what uh, my folder looks like right now it says sqlite 3 de underscore demo.py and it, I'm using Linux you may I don't know how Windows works you may have to put the full path into that I don't really know I know on Linux I don't have to do that okay so it's going to look for that file and I think if it doesn't exist it will create it so let's go ahead and try it. let's just go ahead and run it and see what happens okay and oh I <laughs> spelled SQLite wrong uh, okay lovely so let's go ahead and run that again and you'll see here Okay, the program exited, no errors. Let's see what happened in our folder. Okay, so you can see it has created that database file for us. Okay, so the next step we need to do is to create the table. And to do that, we need to create something called a cursor. And we're just going to use C to represent the cursor. So it equals con.cursor. And this is what we're going to actually be using to send commands to our database. So I'm going to, I'm going to just put a little hashtag here. So connect to database. And in this case, we're actually you know, opening that file. Uh, create a cursor object. And then in here is where we're going to actually start writing 
and sending commands to the database. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create uh, the table, just like they have here. So going back to my demo database, I've got three columns. Okay? Again, name, which is a text field. Phone, which is gonna be a text field. And the reason is because I have a dash in there, so I can't use an integer, for example. And city, which is also text. So I'm gonna go ahead and type the following. We'll say c.execute. So execute, execute, will execute some SQL. So let's, let's do it this way. So make it a little bit more clear. SQL equals, and I'm gonna basically kind of copy this format. So it says create table. And if you recall, I created a table over here called contacts. Note the capitalization. And I want to create three columns. The first is name and its text. The second is, I think, phone. It is also text. And the third is, uh, what was it, city. And it is also text. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. Okay, so that is my full SQL statement. Create table contacts. It's going to have three columns name, which is a text field, phone, which is a text field, and city, which is also a text field. And then I'm just going to go ahead and execute SQL. Now, here's something that if you've never done uh, SQL stuff before, SQL stuff, whatever you want to call it, uh, executing doesn't really do anything. You actually need to commit changes, and that will save it. So I'm going to go ahead and do connection.commit. Okay. So don't get confused here between the cursor and the connection. Okay. The cursor is kind of what you know, you're sending information to the database, and then you have to actually commit it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, see what happens. Okay. So we didn't get any errors. So I'm going to assume, oh, I forgot to close it. Um, so I'll put that down here at the end. Now, if you don't close it, it closes automatically, but it's probably, it's good practice to do that. So close connection. And you only want to close the connection at the end of the program. So con.close or when you're done with that particular connection. So um, now we are assuming <laughs> that that has worked. So let's go ahead and try and test it a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just comment this section of code out. Since we've already created the table, we don't need to create it again. Now there's probably a way to check that. I don't, I don't, again, I don't, I've just started using this myself. So I'm just kind of playing around with it a little bit. But what we want to do next is we want to insert those values into the database. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert, uh, we'll go ahead and insert Jenny, all right? So, just to kind of get an idea how things work. So insert some values. So I'm gonna do the SQL again, equals. And I'm gonna use insert into contacts, the table name. Right? And let's go look at the, the syntax of it. Okay, I gotta put values. and parentheses and quotation marks. So the values that we want to put in there, they have to be in this order. So I'm going to go ahead and now because I use double quotation marks here, I have to use single quotation marks here. So I'm going to put Jenny. Oops. Her phone number is 8675-5309. And we'll say she lives in Los Angeles. I don't really know where the original Jenny lives um, or lived, Angeles. Angeles. Okay. So I'm going to insert. So again, same thing. C dot execute SQL. And then we commit the changes and close the connections. So let's go ahead and run that and see if we get any errors. Okay. Attribute object. Did I spell execute wrong? Yeah. Uh, I have been making so many stupid spelling mistakes. So let's go ahead and try that again. 
And okay, so no errors. So at this point, we're assuming that the values are in there. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, retrieve some values. So let's go ahead and uh, retrieve values. Okay. So again, same thing. We're going to be doing some SQL. And again, all this stuff is here. He's got to kind of figure out how to use it. And in SQL, we use the select statement. Okay. So I'm just going to keep this really simple. I'm going to say select. The asterisk is a wild card. It means select everything. And from, and it's contacts. Contacts. So for now, we're just going to do it that way. And then we're going to say c.execute SQL. Now, here's how I personally do this. We are going to get, this is going to return uh, some objects. So results equal, actually, that's not what I'm, I'm not going to do that way. I'm going to do c.execute SQL. I'll do it this way instead. Uh, and then what I got to do is actually fetch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say results equal. Uh, I'm going to put this C dot fetch all. So this will pull all the different results from the cursor object that we just did. Again, you can see there's, there's slightly different way they do it over here, but I think this is probably easiest. And then at this point, we can print results. Now, I could have put c.fetch all here, and it would have done the same thing. Um, but I think this is probably easier for later. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and execute that and see what happens. And you can see we got the value that we had put in there. And again, it's the same order, Jenny, number, and city. So what I could have done is I say print results zero or results zero and then zero is the name. Oops. So this is just this is a regular list I believe. Um, or it could be some kind of weird object but anyway we'll just call it a list for now. It functions like a list. And one and results uh, zero Two. Okay. And this zero is because it is a tuple inside of a list. Okay. So let's go ahead and just run that again. And you'll see what happened there. Okay, so results zero, zero is Jenny. Results zero one is the number, and results zero two is that. Now we can also select specific columns. So let's say, for example, we, for whatever reason, we just want to know the names of the people in our list. So instead of an asterisk, we just type name. And then when we do that, results is going to be just a little bit different. So I'm going to say print results. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F5 to run it. And you can see how it gave us Jenny and a comma. That's kind of interesting. So the results zero, let's see, let's try results zero here. And that gives us a tuple of all the names. Now, right now, there's only one name. So that's why we only see, we still see this tuple, but we see Jenny and then a comma. Okay, so if there were more names in there, we would get more results. So you just got to be real careful using this index so that you get what you wanted out of that. Now there is also a fetch one, uh, where I think it fetches them one at a time, but I think it's probably just for this purpose of this exercise, we'll just fetch them all and do it that way. Okay, so you can see how we have uh, selected all of the contacts. Um, we can also do the filing, I'll, I'll show you this as well. Um, Select name from contacts, or I could, actually I could do this. If select 
phone from contacts where name equals Jenny. So let's say we had a thousand names in there and we're looking for Jenny's phone number. And this should give us that name or that, that uh, oops, number, I did it. I had an extra space in there. Okay, so that should give us the phone number. Okay, so you can see we got the phone number of Jenny. Again, that's, this assumes that there's only one Jenny. Uh, I'm skipping a lot of SQL stuff, but just to kind of give you an idea of how this works. Um, so you can see how we can retrieve values, we can insert values. Um, I assume that we can update values. I haven't tried it on this, because this isn't a full SQL, but let's, let's get a shot here. Let's try and update, see what happens. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, we'll leave that there. And I'll go ahead and put uh, update values. So I'm going to do SQL equals uh, update. No, is it, or is it insert? Insert into contacts. Actually, I should have tried this ahead of time, but I didn't. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to have to Google that one. So SQL update. So I forgot how, I forgot the syntax for that one. Ah, yeah. Okay. So it is actually update. And so I'm update. The table name is contacts. Um, set. Let's just let's say Jenny moved from LA to uh, Dallas. Uh, so set city equals Dallas where name equals Jenny, oops, Jenny. Okay, and then again, we'll go ahead and do c.execute. And that's the cursor, we'll execute that SQL. And then down here, we'll go ahead and select all from contacts where name equals Jenny. And then we'll see if the city name has changed. Okay, and that did do it. So that is the syntax for updating a, something that already exists. Okay. So those are the basic things that you need to do to use a database. Okay. So you need to connect to the database, create a cursor. Uh, the first time through, you're going to need to create that table so that it has the structure that you want. Okay. And then you can start inserting values into it. You can retrieve the values using the wildcard um, or you, know, you can just you can set conditions like where um, and I think normally in SQL you would add a, a semicolon but it's it's pretty lax here because we're only doing one statement at a time um, again databases is a very very large subject databases modern databases are very impressive with what they can do um, but those are the basics of creating um, a table inside of a database now a database can have more than one table you don't have to have just one you can insert values, as you saw here. You can update values, so using set and where. You can retrieve values by selecting. And again, the asterisk is the wild card. Or you can just choose a column. So let's say if you want to know the city. So what's, what's Jenny's city? This would give you Jenny's city. And then you can use the fetch all. You can also use fetch one. Um, gives you a slightly different style of result. Let's see what happens there. I'm kind of curious. It's been a while since so I've done this stuff. Okay, so if you do fetch one, it doesn't give you the, uh, it doesn't put it into a list because it's probably just fetching the very first result. So depending on how many results you have, you might want to use fetch one, you might want to use uh, fetch all. So something to, something to play around with at least. Okay, so yeah, that's about it. I will put a link to this code uh, down below. I'll put it into my GitHub and you can kind of just download it and play around with it and uh, yeah and kind of go from there okay so that's it um, thanks for watching uh, also back to just real quick this SQLite um, there are only four types of data uh, in SQLite as opposed to a regular database and you have text integer which are real numbers are integers which are like one, two, three, four, five. Real, which is like decimals, like 2.5, 8.6, 3.0. Blob, which is stores, I 
think uh, binary data. I never I never tried that on here, so I'm not 100 sure. And null meaning that there is no value. The value hasn't been put in yet. Okay, so those are the only four that you or five that values that come with SQLite. So SQLite isn't particularly powerful, but it's easy to get started and to learn the basics of databases with that. Okay, so again, thanks to my channel members. Consider uh, subscribing, consider joining, and uh, you know, clicking a, a thumbs up. I do appreciate those things. So take care and keep on coding.